Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the nomenclature of alcohols. Alcohols have the priority over many function groups including alkenes, alkynes, thiols, ethers, thioether, and amine. And I'm going to try to make sure I have all of those examples in there uh, so that you can actually see how to use the rest of these function groups as and the substituents where alcohol will be acting as in a function group. So since alcohol gets the priority, it must have the lowest number in the chain. And then it's uh, the name of the compound with, will end up with an OL for, as uh, part of the alcohol being the function group. In addition to that, you also want to be able to identify primary, secondary, tertiary, uh, and in addition to that, a, a lytic and benzylic alcohols because um, it's important to identify those when you do the reaction mechanisms. So it's better to do practice when you're trying to learn naming uh, the alcohols or not just alcohols but any other compound. So I have just a bunch of examples there. I'm going to go over those one by one and it's probably going to be a good idea if you can pause the video or maybe try to sort those on your own and match with my answers. So this first one I have so since OH group is on the right side, and uh, when I number this chain, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4 here. And uh, this carbon 1 that's having the OH function group is in turn attached to only one more carbon, which is carbon number 2. And uh, what that means, it's got two other hydrogens. And as a result, this is going to be a primary alcohol. So you want to be able to identify the primary, secondaries, and tertiary alcohols as well. So since I have the alcohol group at the first position and the chain is four-membered carbon, so it's going to be a butane as your parent chain. And since you have an alcohol at the first position, I can either call this just a butanol, and you may see in the books, this being called as butane one all, or you may see this is being called as one butanol. But always remember if your function group is at the first position, you don't really have to specify the location of the function group. So saying this as an butanol is going to be completely okay. The common name for that is going to be just butyl alcohol. So you may see the common name in there as well. Uh, what about the second one on the right side here? So I got one and two. So this is again going to be in a primary. And it's just going to be ethane because for two carbons, it's ethane. And you have an OL, so it's just an ethanol. Again, you don't need to specify the position because whether you place the OH on the first carbon or the second carbon is still going to be uh, ethanol. Like suppose if I put an OH there, what difference does that make? Really not any difference because in that case I would call this 1 and call this 2 and it's still going to be an ethanol. What about this next one here? So this next one, the longest chain I'm going to pick is going to be starting from the right side because your OH needs to have the lowest number uh, possible. So I'm going to call this 1, 2, 3, 4, five and it doesn't matter whether you go to the top or to the left here this is going to be six here and i can clearly see i got uh, methyl groups at the fourth position and i got a methyl group at the fifth position so this is a methyl here and that's a methyl there so those are going to be your substituents there and i can call those four five dimethyl and then it's a six-membered chain, so it's going to be in a hexane. But remember, your alcohol is at the second position, so I'm going to call this 2-hexanol. Now, you may also see in the books this being written as something like this. I'm just going to copy this down here. So it's 4,5-dimethyl, and then you may see this being written as hexane, and then they specify the position of the alcohol right before the function group. So it's going to be 2 all. So either one is fine, actually. What about this next one here? So now I'm getting some other function groups like this one. I got an ethyl there. So your longest chain still going to be 1, 
two, three, four, and five. So even though you have a thiol and the alcohol, remember alcohol gets the priority, so you must have the lowest number in the chain. And this particular alcohol is actually going to be a tertiary alcohol. Because remember, this carbon that's bearing the OH group is in turn attached to three other carbons. One is right there, there is another one here, and there is another one here. So that makes it a tertiary alcohol. So make sure you're able to identify your types of alcohols as well. So I got two substitutes now. I got a methyl group at the second carbon, and I got an ethyl on this uh, four carbon. So the thiol is used as an, a functional group, but because of the alcohols, SH is not going to be the functional group, but rather it's going to be in the substituent. So the name for the substituents when thiol is there is Marcapto. So I'm going to call this, um, so both methyl and Marcapto starts with M, so you're still going to have to go with alphabetical order. And uh, in Marcapto, uh, M-E-R and methyl is M-E-T, so M-E-R comes first. So it's going to be 4 Marcapto, and then you have 2 methyl, and then we got this uh, 2 pentanol. All right, let's just keep going on here. Uh, what about this next one here? So on the next one, I got the double bond and I got an alcohol. So remember, your alcohol should get the lowest number possible. So if I do count it from the left side, so that's one, two, three, four. So then your alcohol gets on the fourth position. But if I count it from the right side, then your alcohol gets on the third position. So I want to go ahead and count it from the right side. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I know it's going to be an hex. Uh, because it's a six-membered chain here. But then I have the alcohols at the third position. And remember, this is actually going to be a um, either R or S because you got this OH going back into the page. So I got to make sure I figure out what's that going to be. So if I number those curves, so remember the OH, oxygen is going to get number one here. And since you have a double bond on the left side, that's going to get number two. And this is going to get number three. So when I'm looking at here, it's going one, two, three. It's going clockwise. And remember, your fourth group, which is going to be the hydrogen that's not shown, is coming out of the page. And uh, it seems like it's going clockwise when you're following one, two, and three. But since hydrogen is coming out of the page, I will have to flip it. So instead of looking at it clockwise, it's eventually going to be in a counterclockwise. So it's actually going to be an S form. So I can go ahead and say it's going to be 3s. And then you do have a double bond there. And you got to worry about whether that double bond is actually going to be a, a z or it's going to be an e. So let's figure that out. So I have a hydrogen here. And I got a hydrogen there. So I can clearly see these uh, lower priority groups are opposite to one another. Because when I'm focusing on this carbon 5, in carbon 5, this methyl group is going to be number 1, and your hydrogen is going to be number 2. And in this carbon 4, your uh, this left, uh, this right group on the bottom is going to be 1 here, and your hydrogen is going to be 2. So when your same priority groups are opposite to one another, that's like the trans, or another way of saying it's going to be E. So I, I would have to say it's 4E in the beginning of the names. And now you worry about writing the rest of the name. So let's see what that's going to be. So I have obviously a double bond so that we got to worry about. So it's going to be in a hex. And I can say, all right, I got at the fourth position, there is a double bond. So it's a hex 4 in. And then at the third position, I got an alcohol. So it's going to be 3 OL at the end of the day. So that's how it's going to look like. What about this? next one here. So in this next one, I got the thioether as well. So when I'm counting the chain, I would have to count it from the right side. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, and five. And uh, I want to get, I got to worry about what's going to be the RNS there. So when I'm looking at this alcohol, 
this would be one, that would be two, that would be three. If you don't have a good understanding on how to find RNS, you may want to watch my other video where I have explained how you get RNS uh, in details. So this is going to be one, two, three. The hydrogen is already back into the page, so I don't have to flip it. So it's going counterclockwise. So that's going to be an S. And then let's look at the other chiral center there. So the other chiral center, this is going to be one, that's two, that's three. So that's going um, clockwise now. So that's going to be an R. So I got an S and I got an R. And that, so I got two S and I got four R. And then now I got to worry about put the rest of the name. So this thioether is going to be acting as a substituent here. And it's at the fourth position. So I'm going to say it's four. And you got a methyl group on it, so it's going to be 4-methyl thio. And then I can uh, write down the rest of the name, and it can say 2-pentanol. So that's how it's going to look like. Let's uh, keep moving on here. Got a ring here, so this is going to be, I'm going to start counting where the alcohol is. 1, 2, 3, 4 five and six and then worry about what the RNS is going to be here so the R uh, on the first one this is going to be number one and that's going to be two and that's going to be three and your alcohol your hydrogen is already going back into the page so this is going clockwise so that's going to be an R and then I also have another chiral center at carbon five so that's going to be uh, when I'm counting, um, when I'm figuring out who's going to get the priority, this will be one, this would be two, and then this ethyl group will be three, and obviously your hydrogen that's coming out of the page is going to be four. So when I'm following one, two, and three, it clearly seems like it's going clockwise, but remember I would have to flip it because your hydrogen is coming out of the page. So even though it's going clockwise, when I flip it, it will be counterclockwise, so that's going to be an S. So now I've figured out the RNS in there. So this is going to be 1R, and I got 5S. And now I can say it's going to be, I got a substituent at the fifth position, so it's going to be 5 ethyl. And then it's going to be a cyclohexene. So I can probably just say cyclohex, and then I want to specify the position of the double bond, which is at the second position, so it's 2-ene. And I can just say OL after that, or if you don't, if you want to go ahead and say 2-ene and 1-OL, that's also okay. But remember, if the alcohol is at the first position, you don't really have to specify the position of the alcohol. So this is how it's going to look like. Um, and this is actually going to be your secondary alcohol. But also remember, in addition to being in a secondary alcohol, this is also an allylic alcohol. So it's a secondary and allylic because you got the double bond uh, at the allylic position there. And this uh, previous one that we just did, that was also the secondary and allylic alcohol because you got the double bond it one sigma bond away from that uh, OH group there. Okay, what about this next one here? Uh, I got a triple bond, but remember your alcohol still gets the priority, so that's one, two, three. And remember, when you have a triple bond, wherever the triple bond starts and end, there's going to be carbon, so it's four and five. So that second position is the chiral position, so that's going to be one here, two here, three here. The fourth group, which is hydrogen, is going to be going back into the page. So I don't really have to worry about uh, drawing that. So this is going clockwise. So that's going to be R. So that would be 2R. And then I can go ahead and specify the rest of the name. So Pent. And then since this is a triple bond at the fourth position, I'll say YN. And then also worry about the position of the alcohol. So that's going to be at the second position, so it's going to be 2-OL, so that's how it's going to look like. You may, can uh, you can also write it as 4-pentine and then 2-O, 
So that's also uh, going to be OK. OK, let's look at some of these aromatic uh, alcohols. So this first one, when you have the OH right on the benzene ring, it's got a common name called phenol. So you want to make sure you are aware of that. And then uh, let's look at this next one. So this next one has nitro group and this um, methyl group. So when I'm counting, when I'm counting these numbers on the benzene ring, I'm going to be starting right here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Let me just change the color there. So I can say uh, it's going to be four methyl and three nitro phenol. Because remember, that's the common name. And then instead of saying four methyl, three nitro, remember this nitro is at the meta position and this uh, methyl is at the para position. I could also say it's I'm just going to copy this down for a minute, just for the sake of time. I can also say that it's going to be paramethyl and meta nitrophenol. Sometimes you can write it using parameta terminology, but if you have multiple groups, sometimes you will have to write it in the form of uh, uh, numbering the ring. Okay, what about this next one here? So this next one, whenever you have a, a, a aromatic and then you got another carbon there, so this particular is actually going to be a benzylic position. So this is actually going to be in a benzylic alcohol. And the common name for that it would be benzyl alcohol. And uh, that's because this position is called benzylic position or benzylic carbon. Now, this is actually the common name and more likely the IUPAC name for that would be, well, I can treat this uh, aromatic as in a substituent. So when I treat this aromatic as in a substituent, it's going to be the phenyl and then you have only one carbon. So it's going to be a phenyl and then methane. And then remember, it's going to be an alcohol, so it's going to be an phenyl methanol. But most commonly, you're going to be seeing people calling this benzyl alcohol instead of phenyl methanol. But phenyl methanol is the IUPAC name, where benzyl alcohol is the common name. You may also see this being written as BNOH. That's just because uh, the common uh, abbreviation for the benzyl is going to be the BN, just like the common abbreviation for the phenyl is the pH. In the books, you may say see for the benzyl is BN. Okay, let, what about these last two I got here? Um, so I'm going to start from the right side. It's going to be one, two, three, four. So I can clearly see I got a methyl position. Uh, I got this uh, aromatic at the fourth position, but then I also have this uh, methyl group. So I'm going to be calling this uh, uh, one prime, I can say two prime, three prime, or I can just say meta. Uh, it doesn't matter. So I got a main chain and then I got a secondary chain. And in that secondary chain, I got a, another substituent on it, which is going to be this methyl. So that's when it gets a little bit complicated how you're going to be naming those. And it turns out I want to actually go ahead and name this secondary chain first. So this is indeed at the fourth position. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this down here. So it's going to be four. And then in the parentheses, so when you put the parentheses, it means you have a, another um, substituent in the substituent. So you got the phenyl, obviously. But remember, at the third position, you got this methyl. So I'm going to say three. methyl and then I got phenyl because the at the fourth position you have the phenyl but then in the phenyl at the third position you have the methyl so that's how it's gonna look like and then you gotta worry about the rest of the name so then you have at the third position you got the chloro so it's three chloro 
and then you have uh, the double bond at the third position. So it's going to be but three in, and then I got an alcohol at the second position, uh, two all. So I didn't really worry about any of those uh, the R and S yet. So I got to go back and figure those out. So let's uh, see what's going on there. Uh, this. I think I made a mistake there. This is not a chiral center, so I can just draw that just strictly just coming out like this. Um, so at the second position, what's that going to be? Is that going to be an R or S? So this would be 1, 2, and 3. Your hydrogen is back into the page, so that's going to be R. Worry about the other guys. So this is going to be, uh, well, that one. Um, we got the chlorine going to the top, so and then between chlorine and this group, chlorine gets the priority, so it's one, and that's going to be two. And then obviously you have this hydrogen here on the carbon number four, so that's going to be one here, and that's going to be two here. So you can see that your same priority groups are on the... Uh, same side, so like chlorine and that phenyl is on the same side, and then your uh, number twos are on the same side. So this is actually going to be a Z form. So I can go ahead and say it's going to be 2R and 3Z, and then you have the rest of the name in there. Okay, what about this last one I have here? So in this last one, I got an amino group, and uh, I still want to count it from the left side because I want to make sure the OH gets the lowest number possible. So one, two, three, and four. And the second position right there is chiral. So I want to make sure what that uh, chirality is going to be. So this would be one, that's two, that's three. And your hydrogen is coming out of the page. That's going to be four. So it seems like it's going clockwise, but then you got to reverse it because your hydrogen is coming out of the page. So it's going to be an S form. All right, so I can go ahead and write it out now. So I got the amino, amine group at the fourth position. So that's going to be four amino. And then I can go ahead and say butane two all. Or I can even say four amino two butanol. And always remember, I got to specify. Um, whether it's or R or S, so that's going to be a S at the second position. So I'll say 2S in the beginning and then 4 amino butanol. So this is how you're going to be naming some of the alcohols. So I did have some of the a uh, little bit complicated molecules in there. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.